Hi guys, Zane here, and welcome to my latest weekly reading and writing vlog. So, Biggie is down there on the floor, just eating some treats. I've been trying to have a bit of a tidy today, so I've been tidying over there in the kitchen. You can't really see, and the floor is very messy, but I'm getting there. Um, I'm trying to make my house a little bit more homely, so I'm going to get a big, uh, well I've ordered it, I've ordered this big like hippie throw uh, of like a meditating psychedelic woman, which is going to go up there in a corner. So that's all very good. Uh, today is the 2nd of January, so I have recovered from my New Year's Eve hangover. I got up at half nine this morning, I'm trying to get back to working nine to five with my freelance stuff, and I'm just going to do freelance stuff and none of my own stuff, so that hopefully... I get more done in the evenings. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I, I need to give myself some structure. So that's what I'm trying at the moment. Seemed to work well. I spent most of today actually writing an article about pickups for guitars. It was the uh, best five pickups for 2019. So uh, I've almost finished that. I've got about another hour to do on that tomorrow. So that should be good. In terms of reading, I finished reading Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I gave this a 4 out of 5. It's not my favourite of hers, but it is definitely very typical of her style, so I can see why people would recommend it as a first book. And, uh, and I think as well, I put this in my review on Goodreads, I think when people pick up their first book by their new favourite author or whatever, it tends to be that book that they then go on to recommend. So I think it kind of became a self-fulfilling cycle that people recommend Murder on the Orient Express because it is a good standalone introduction to Christie's work. But then they then grow up and then recommend it to their kids or whatever, you know, and they recommend it to other people because that was their first brush with Poirot. So uh, I did enjoy it. I would say check it out if you've never read any Christie, although I would personally say start with either And Then There Were None or uh, um, uh, Death on the Nile. Those are two of my favourites. So I read that. And then I read Motherhood by Helen Simpson. So this is another one of the vintage mini moderns. I'm getting towards the end now of these. And um, this was actually like the one called Babies by Anne Enright, where I didn't expect to like it because of the subject matter and then I actually did. And I think part of the reason for that was because it was very honest. They're all short fiction as opposed to memoirs, which I think actually made it more interesting and more approachable for me. But also what it did really well is that it, it showed the different sides of motherhood and how it's not always good and how like it can affect your friendships and your work and your relationships and your sex life and all this stuff so uh, I gave it a four out of five as well and uh, thought it was pretty good so now I've gone back to Christie again I've picked up cards on the table I'm about 60 odd pages in 78 pages in of about 250 pages and uh, only picked it up earlier today but I'm enjoying it so far it's had a pretty good setup I have no idea what the solution is going to be yet and uh, yeah despite being a Poirot book I'm enjoying it quite a lot so far that is, that is tongue in cheek. Poirot's fine, he's just, I just prefer Miss Marple. So yeah, on that note, I'm off. I'm going to do a little bit of editing now as well, possibly push a new video out. And uh, yeah, maybe a little bit more tidying of my flat before I go to bed. We'll see. But on that note, uh, yeah, bye bye. Alright, so I'm watching PewDiePie play. I think Life is Strange is what it's called. The person, the character can rewind time. Hang on a minute. Hey Google! Pause. Yeah, I'm here in the kitchen. I am making some, they are like little potato cakes. Uh, I've got some more over here ready to, to be fried as well. And uh, then I'm going to have it with this. This is like vegan mayo and I'll put some chives and some black pepper in. Lovely. I also got new cutlery. So um, I, I might even do a tour later. I've got a few more bits I need to do. Because it's a bit messy at the moment because last night I recorded a song. But um, I basically I've been cleaning my house. So, so for example, the reason I have this new cutlery is because I'm in nice and shiny cutlery drawer, and I decided to get rid of my old stuff because I had a mixture of red and blue. So I'm just going all red. Like cupboards, kind of clean. I wiped them down. Even the bathroom, clean the bathroom floor. Look at that. The the bowl and the litter tray swapped sides in here. So uh, you can imagine how awkward that was to clean. But. Uh, you know, I've got stuff like a new lava lamp, very nice. Just trying to make it a bit more homely. I bought a new neck curtain because you might be able to see over there. My uh, living room window has no neck curtain, which means whenever I have it, the curtains open like that, people can just see in. And, uh, oh, I've got some flowers. And uh, so the reason that I don't have one is because Biggie destroyed the last one, didn't you, cat? Didn't you destroy the neck curtain? we got some new lights there around the bed, some more flowers there. Biggie started sleeping up there now, so I put these board games there to help him up, but he still just jumps up 
um, but he does like to lie on that little uh, blanket up there. So yes, you know, it's all fairly tidy. I'll give you a full tour later anyway. I might do an actual tour video. In terms of my reading, I don't think I've finished anything since I last spoke to you guys. Uh, I've been reading Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie. I've like really nearly finished now. And, yeah, like that much of it left to go. So I'll finish that today, I am sure, and give you a little update in a bit. Uh, yeah, been, I would, I've been fairly down recently. I've actually filmed a video that I haven't edited and posted yet uh, about mental health, which ju is just my mental health story, but um, I'll share that with you with you soon. And I think that's about it. There are no open mic nights and stuff on at the moment, so I'm just trying to be productive. Hence why, at the moment, because it's a Saturday, I'm trying to do, uh, trying to catch up with a bit of booktube, get some editing done. Uh, I just pushed out, what was it that I just released? Oh, my last reading vlog. I've got a haul just uploading at the moment for December. I've got October reading wrap up to edit. Uh, just loads of stuff, but it's all coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled. And uh, yeah, that's about it, I think. Cool. Uh, I thought I'd play my new song for you. It's it's called Nobody Cares and I wrote and recorded it between the hours of two and five o'clock in the morning while feeling very depressed. So with that cheerful note in mind. down until I couldn't breathe so I wrote my name on an envelope and tried to sail across the sea I want to move away somewhere so no one knows my name and I bet if you could see inside my head you'd feel the same cause I'm not happy with who I am I wish I could be a better man I wish someone would understand Nobody cares If you're feeling blue Like I do Because I'm scared of death and afraid of life So I'll light another cigarette Until the itch is satisfied I read somewhere the things we see Are based on subjectivity And feelings are a lie We try to share with specificity I'm not happy with who I am I wish I could be a better man I wish someone would understand Nobody cares If you're feeling blue Like I do
don't know, I didn't play it in that key when I recorded it, so <coughs> normally I play it more like. But it's easier to sing in a different key. Well, anyway. Biggie, what are you doing up there? And what happens if I move? Look, you've got to move. They say go closed, closed. He's just bloody vomited as well. Look, fucking vomit on the floor. And yeah, you vomited on the floor and then decided to go and stand on the side in the kitchen, which seems very hygienic, doesn't it? Hey, mind you, I have a poorly tummy today as well. Something in the air. Mm, I wonder where the cat is. I bet I can guess. Oh no, he's not up there. Where is the cat? He's gone. Hello. Hey, Biggie. Phil. Oh no, you're just going to show off your ass. Um, it is 20 to 6 in the morning. My sleeping pattern is screwed. So yesterday, uh, well yesterday I went to bed at about midnight, 1am. Didn't actually get to sleep till about 7am. Um, yeah, that's how long it takes me to get to sleep. And the doctors just tell me to try reading more before bed, which I find fucking hilarious. But anyway, so, yeah, sleeping pattern screwed. I woke up at 5 p.m. yesterday uh, when my friend Jordana, who I play music with sometimes, she like she sent me a message because basically, because she wants to lose some weight. So I've been losing weight by, well, being vegan, but also doing loads of walks. So I've got her into doing walks. So she was like, I'm going to, going to Sainsbury's on a walk. Do you want to come? And I was there in bed and I was like, yeah, I should probably get up. So I went to do that and got some food. But, um... I've forgotten where this was going. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's why I'm awake at this time. I'm probably going to try and stay awake a little bit longer. We'll see. Uh, there's an open mic tonight at 8 p.m. in 14 hours. So I could maybe stay up for that because I've only been up for 12 hours. That's the thing. That's why there's not much point me going to bed now. So I've, I've basically been working pretty much non stop as well because. So this is the other problem that when I don't sleep. Like that night when I went to bed at 1am, the plan was to get up at 9am and start working. But instead, I wasted most of that sleeping time and slept through my working time. So then I had to work all night tonight just to catch back up. So I've still got a full day of work to do by 5.30pm. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But I wanted to... Ooh. I wanted to film a quick update to let you know about some more books that I have read. So, I finished... Is there another one missing? No, I think that's right. So I finished reading Depression by William Styron. So, um, this is the unabridged text of Darkness Visible. And, um, basically this is about his, experience with, his experiences with depression. So he didn't actually really struggle with it until he was 60 years old but he'd seen his friends and other writers that he knew struggle with it and so he kind of comes at it across from those two different points of view you know which made it quite interesting he, he looked at it as an observer but also as an active sufferer uh, you know he was hospitalized at one point I mean there's a quote on the back being alone in the house even for a moment caused me exquisite panic and trepidation I've been there but luckily now I have Biggie so I just chase him down but um you know as someone who suffers from depression i thought you know he, he nailed it he treated it very sensitively he also i think he wrote about it in a way that you could appreciate whether you have depression or not and for that i think that makes it quite an important read you know but uh, i gave it a four out of five it wasn't perfect but it was it was very enjoyable and then i read the space adventures of kirk sandblaster space adventurer by ollie jacobs so this will be for todd and danes indie read along trying to do that quiet it's now quarter to six in the morning, I don't know, give it a couple hours and maybe I'll get my lighting up and film some proper videos. But <laughs> So this is the first book in the Kirk Sandblaster series. I actually read and reviewed three of these for last month's Indie Read Along and I decided I'd pick up the remaining two of them. I think he's also, he, he, he posted something on Instagram the other day to say he uh, think he just finished writing book number six. So there's that to look forward to. This isn't the best book in the series, but again it is the first one. Um, there are a few of what you'd expect from an indie novel, you know, a few spelling mistakes, weird formatting here and there, no page numbers, you know. But it is a great little introduction to the world of Kirk Sandblaster. It's kind of humorous sci-fi a la Douglas Adams. And, uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. And uh, I gave it a 3.5 
purely because I'm trying to measure it against the other books in the series. My favourite so far has probably been Kirk Sandblaster Faces Tetrageddon. Uh, but I will link below to my reviews of the other three Kirk Sandblaster books. And I'll post fuller reviews of this one and the other one that I have, which I don't know where it is, <laughs> in my bedroom somewhere, uh, once I read it. And then I've started reading Love by Jeanette Winterson. So, uh, what does it say about this? Yeah, it just says selected from the books of Jeanette Winterson this. So the, the thing that's kind of bugging me about this is that, yeah, so it's literally just a list of her books, basically, and then she kind of presents a few excerpts from them and kind of does, like, a running commentary, which would be cool if I'd read any of her work before. But because I haven't read any of her books, it's a bit weird reading her commentary on stuff that I haven't read. So I'm kind of not enjoying it because of that, which is a shame because I think this is the last of the vintage mini moderns that I have to read. I'll, I'll show you. And then, once I've finished reading these, I have these, the Penguin Black Classics, to go through. How many are there? There are 80 of them. Because I've been going through my box set, so there were 50 Penguin Blue Mini Modern Classics. I think there were about, were there 18 or 20 Horrible Histories ones in that box set? And then there were 20 in the Vintage Mini Moderns, I believe, as well. So, uh, yeah, th these are basically the equivalent of all three box sets that I've already done. And I knocked me thing over. But, uh, yeah, there's some cool cool authors in this. I'm looking forward to that one there, just looking at Guy de Maupassant. Studied him at uni. Friedrich Nietzsche. I've never read Nietzsche. And uh, so if you're into Myers-Briggs personality types... Uh, which, which I am. You, you either know what I'm talking about or you're not, or you don't hear, but uh, I am an INTJ and I've been reading recently lots of like memes about how INTJs love Nietzsche, so that would be good. Also how we don't have hearts. We do have hearts, they're just black and sparkly. Anyway, I'm gonna, I've got some books here to open as well that came in the post, so I'm going to open those now because why not? See you in a bit. Oh, it's Tuesday in case you're wondering. Although it feels like Monday, because... What are you doing? Why are you sitting on the oven? What would you do if I, uh... No, I'm not... <laughs> what are you doing? Alright, I'll leave you to it, I guess. Alright, I went to bed at about 8am in the end and slept till about 5pm, so sleep is still screwed. It's now 10 past 7. I've just finished sorting my house out. I have a new wall hanging. Yeah, look at that. Alright, so now that's like, that's how I sit and do my work. And I also got another one through here uh, and some lights. You can't really see it too well, but uh, yeah, up here. And then down here we have my guitars, that's where my guitar normally goes on the stand. But it's an open mic night this evening, so I'm going to go to that, because I haven't been to one for a while. I'm watching PewDiePie. Uh, yeah. I've made pesto stuffed bread and it looks amazing. Also, I'm watching Harriet Rosie. Hey, Harriet. 
Oh, well, hey Jenna, aka Bibliophils. We're gonna go see the cat. Look, this is where he lives now. Isn't it, Biggs? You live on the ceiling. Yes. Mm. Hey Google, pause. Oh, there it is. I was looking for my, uh, my stand. Do you notice the uh, booktube poster is, thing is now just on the wall? Makes it easier for me, to be honest. All right, I'm in focus. So, uh, just a quick update. I have finished reading Love by Jeanette Winterson. Um, I did enjoy it, actually. It's very well written. My only problem is, like I say, that it keeps examining her books, and it examines, like, ten of her books, and I've not read any of them. So, and, like, she'll be like, here's the opening line, here's the ending line, and I'm like, well, do I even need to read that book anymore now? So, I didn't really like it for that. I would have preferred it to... I don't know, I would have preferred just excerpts, I think. However, it was it was decent enough. I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. What I particularly liked is a, a lot of the quotes. Like, these have these little pull-out quote pages. Let me find one. When love is unreliable and you are a child, you assume that it is the nature of love, its quality, to be unreliable. So yeah, really interesting. And now I am reading Kirk Sandblaster Plays the Game of Loria by Ollie Jacobs. This is the final one of the Kirk Sandblaster books that I have yet to read. And uh, I will be doing a review of that one and uh, the other one, the Kirk Sandblaster Space Adventure, soon. In the meantime, I am off to try and do some filming for once. I'm going to do a book sh bookshelf tour because I've fallen behind on them. So yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yo, 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 uh, the camera's on the tripod today, so we'll, look, uh, uh, you can't see, but it's, <laughs> I don't know how I expected that was going to work. Um, yeah, it is Thursday. Uh, I didn't sleep too well again last night, which is a bummer, because I have to be up at 10am tomorrow for a call, and then a driving lesson at 11. But it'll be fine. Uh, just currently watching Harriet Rosie, she's talking about graphic novels. Uh, not the most flattering of stills there, sorry Harriet. Um, what else have we got that is new? I have finished reading Kirk Sandblaster Plays the Game of Loria. So I'll be reviewing this and Kirk Sandblaster Space Adventure for Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. This is probably, I've read five books in this series now, and this one is probably a tie with uh, Kirk Sandblaster Faces Tetrageddon. Uh, this one, in this one, basically, the game of Loria is like a battle royale almost with these like non deadly lasers, except there are lots of deadly explosions, you know. But Kirk Sandblaster is a space adventurer, so he thinks, I'm gonna go and enter that game and try to win it. And so that's pretty much the story of it. A lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I gave it a four out of five, but a pretty solid one, to be honest. Um, you know. Could even go 4.25, but that's overcomplicating things. So now I've read that, I've moved on to Black Coffee by Agatha Christie, although it's actually by Charles Osborne. It's a novelization of one of her plays, and it's only like 160 odd pages long, so I have a feeling I will whiz through that. Other than that, really, I'm just mostly keeping busy because I have lots of work to do. But I am going to do some filming as well. I also got my Vegan Kind snack box today, uh, which has got all these goodies like this, like chocolate pretzel protein bar. I just had a protein shake. I also had some bloody protein jerky. The ironic thing is, is that vegans don't... This is a protein energy ball. But, like, vegans don't necessarily even need protein. Like, you don't need... You get enough protein, as long as you're eating like a, a healthy mix of foods and like having nuts and stuff, which I have quite a lot of, you don't, <laughs> you don't need more protein. So now I've, I've worked it out and I've had like 400% of my daily allowance of protein from like two things. Ah, but anyway, they also sent me this. Poof Magic Wash Dazzling Shampoo. So this was like, because it's one of those subscription box things, and this was like seven seven pounds RRP, which is like half the value of the box. And I'm not going to use this, even if I did use like, I guess it's dry shampoo or is it wet shampoo? I don't even know. I think it's regular shampoo, but but I have to use special shampoo because I am a sensitive soul with a sensitive scalp, so I can't even use it. So I'm just going to give it to someone, maybe Jordana. We'll see. Oh, hey, cat. How are you? You all right? Good. Hey. Hey, buddy. Oh, are you going to give me a kiss? Oh, yes, you're kissing my nose. It feels like sandpaper. Are you having a nice nap? Oh, mate, I am tired. I actually got up at 9am for once, which was good. Um, 
I'm just about to go and do my walk. Uh, I haven't been doing them so much recently, so I want to get back to it today. I also found out that I owe the tax man 1,500 quid, so there's that. Luckily, I have 1,500 quid in my savings, but then I can't afford to pay the later tax that I owe in ju ju July. But it's alright, because I've got until July to make that money back. So, yeah. Oh, let's go see Biggie, because he's in his little place. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. You alright up there, cat? How you doing? Uh...
Christmas. I put my trousers on, have a cup of tea, and I think about leaving the house. I feed the pigeons, I sometimes feed the sparrows too. It gives me a sense of enormous well-being. And then I'm happy for the rest of the day, safe in the knowledge that will always be a bit of my heart devoted to. Joggers who go round and round and round and round. Oh, people! Yo! I am hungover from last night. I had about five or six beers. No, five or six ciders and then five or six beers. So, a good night. Uh, hosted the Art Centre open mic successfully. I also did the lighting. And then my friend Dave did sound. In fact, you've just watched me and Dave do some music. Uh, we did Park Life and uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door. I played three songs as well. I tried to capture as many of the different acts, but obviously I can't capture myself while I'm playing. But uh, luckily people got their phones out near the end when everyone was drunk and we were doing cheesy pop covers. We also did Creep and something else. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go to Lidl. I need uh, hangover support food. They're, they're drinking shots of banana flavoured alcohol. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> you probably don't want to see that. Yeah, they're drinking shots of banana flavoured alcohol by a, with, through a spoon from a bowl, as you do. Anyway, it's Saturday evening. I did my uh, little trip to Lidl earlier. I want to quickly update you on some books. So I finished reading Black Coffee, which is basically a novelization of an Agatha Christie play by a guy called Charles Osborne who has also been a Christie biographer he's a novelist himself quite short but actually it did read really true it felt like an Agatha Christie novel he even kept some of the colonialism in it and stuff so for example at one point there was a reference to it Italians love poisoning people it's their weapon of choice or whatever which is funny because they you said the same thing about Italians but with knives in a different Agatha Christie book I read but uh, yeah I enjoyed it four out of five for me pretty well written and uh, you know a worthy addition to the oeuvre you know as long as you appreciate that it wasn't written by Christy it was written by somebody else but based on her plot you know holds its own and then I read Mrs. Rosie and the Priest by Giovanni Boccaccio so I but yeah it says here on the back bawdy tales of pimps cuckolds lovers and clever women from the 14th century Florentine masterpiece the Decameron now I can confirm that these were bawdy I was actually kind of impressed by how like filthy these were for the time period i guess this was before you know we got to like victorian sensibilities and everyone pretending sex didn't exist so the first story is about um this uh let's see andrecio's i can't say the names andrecio's de perugia's neapolitan adventures and basically it's about a guy who gets tricked by a prostitute she pretends that she's his uh long lost sister he falls for it she takes his money and then he decides to join these people who want to rob a grave and get this like valuable ring off a dead priest's finger. Really weird. Ricciardo de Cinzinca loses his wife. That one is about a guy who gets married to a younger woman and basically he, he can't keep up with her in the bedroom so he basically starts telling her like, oh today is the feast day of St. So and so and today is so and so and he's always finding some religious reason to not have sex with her so she then goes off and finds you know somebody who will have sex with her and uh, that's basically the story of that Mrs. Rosie and the Priest which one was that one I can't remember what happened with that one too much oh I can remember that one that was about a priest who is trying to convince a young girl to have sex with him and he eventually like he offers to give her five pounds I think and it's just weird and then we have Patient Griselda, and that one isn't about sex, but basically it's about this woman who marries a dude, and then the dude is horrible to her. So, like, 
he tells her that he doesn't want the kid anymore, actually, so they send the kid off to die. Then they do the same with the, the son. So the son and the daughter both get sent off to die, except secretly he is just having them raised. And then he tells her to piss off and sends her back to, 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 to her dad. And then a little bit later, he tells her she's getting married, invites her along. The person he's pretending to get married to is actually their daughter. And then... Uh, and then she takes him back after all that. She's like, cause, and he's like, well, I wanted to test that she did, that she was true. And it's like, bloody, you're lucky that she stuck around, mate. And now I am reading Appointment with Death and a, a classic Hercule Poirot mystery back to uh, Agatha Christie. So I will be uh, cracking on with that shortly. But I'm going to end this reading vlog here because it's getting kind of long now because the open mics and all that kind of stuff. I've actually started editing it. I think this might be like half hour, maybe 40 minutes, I don't know. So we're going to end the uh, reading vlog here and we'll pick up with the next one as of tomorrow. So on that note, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.